That was a severe kickback accident. The worst possible thing that can happen to you if you're working with a chainsaw. Since people began using chainsaws in the 1940s and 50s, thousands have been hurt or killed in accidents just like that. Sure, chainsaws are a lot safer nowadays, but kickback is still just as dangerous. People are still getting hurt, and people are still getting killed. What can we do about it? Well, let's start by taking a look at exactly what kickback is and how it works. There's really nothing very mysterious or terribly complicated about it. It's a matter of force and momentum. In a chainsaw, the force from the engine acts just as much on the saw in one direction as it does on the chain in the other. But the chain is lighter and you're holding on to the body of the saw, so the saw stays put and the chain goes around. Now, let me show you with something a little safer. When we turn on the motor, the force acts just as much on the body as it does on the chuck. But the chuck is lighter and I'm holding on to the body, so the chuck goes around and the body stays still. But look what happens if we suddenly stop the moving part. Right, all that force has to go somewhere, so the other part starts to rotate. And you'll notice it's going the other way around. That's a transfer of momentum. Equal force, opposite direction. That's exactly what happens in a chainsaw kickback. Normally the chain is going around, but when something grabs a chain and stops it when it's running under power, that same transfer of momentum takes place. And when the chain is forced to stop, the saw has to move in the opposite direction. Now when that happens, there are only two variables we have to worry about. The amount of force and the direction of the motion. The amount of force in the kickback may be very little if the chain isn't forced to a sudden or complete stop. The saw may just buck a little bit or bounce in the cut. It happens all the time while you're cutting. If the chain is pinched or slowed down a lot though, the kickback is more severe and the saw might rebound out of the cut. It happens what? Once or twice a day, but it's still fairly easy to deal with if you're holding the saw properly. But it's when you're cutting under full power and something happens to slam the chain to a sudden dead stop that all of the energy in the system goes into the kickback. And that's when the consequences can be really bad. That's where the second variable, direction, comes in. If you stop the chain on the top of the bar where it's running forward, the saw goes the opposite way, straight back. If you stop the chain on the bottom of the bar where it's running towards you, the saws jerk straight forward. And here, at the tip of the bar, the chain is running at an angle forward and down at the same time. If it gets stopped here, the saw will go up and back. So that's really all there is to it. A kickback happens when the chain is forced to stop and all that energy has to go somewhere. And where it goes is right back into the saw and right back at whoever happens to be standing in the wrong place when it gets there. Now the next question is, what is it that can stop the saw so suddenly that it causes a kickback? Well, there's a couple of different situations. There's bar tip dig in and there's pinching the bar. Generally, the most serious one is the first one. What happens is that the cutters, those little cutting links in the chain, are making a turn around the tip of the bar. That means that they're pointing out from the bar at an angle. If you let that part of the bar touch solid wood, a branch behind the one you're trying to cut, for example, then that cutter can bite into it at an angle and go too deep. Sometimes, in fact, it goes in so deep that it gets stuck. When it's stuck, it stops the chain, all in a split instant. And when that chain slams to a stop, we know what happens. Transfer of momentum, kickback. What makes bar tip dig in so bad is that both of the variables in kickback, force and direction, are at their worst. When the chain digs in at the tip, the force is often high, and that's bad. And the direction, of course, is up and back. And that's very bad, if that's where you happen to be standing. The second way that the chain can be forced to stop is if it gets pinched by the wood that you're cutting. If you try to cut a log from below in one sweep, for example. You see what happens when the log starts to break? The two ends swing downwards, the cut opens wider at the bottom and closes up at the top. It's that closing up at the top that's a problem. 
as it closes, all the weight of the two halves of the log are pushing together, and it can pinch the chain tight, so tight that it stops. And then, right, the saw kicks straight back out of the cut. The same sort of thing happens, happens all the time, really, when you're cutting branches or spring poles. They tend to be under strain from being forced to bend, and when you've cut part way through, they start to break and start to pinch, like that. So kickback happens. And what we want to know is, what can we do about it?